let me take you back a couple of years to a simpler time. April of 2012. You got a 10 year old me that at that point in my life, my biggest obsession is Lego. All I would ever talk about was these overpriced pieces of plastic. Everything I searched online was regarding Lego. I don't know how incredibly lucky I am that I didn't find some strange Lego fetish porn. The videos I'd be making right now would be very different. Eventually I found this subgenre of animation called Brick Film. It was so cool to see what other people could do with these things. Shows like Sean's Apartment, Lucky 28's Harry Potter series, Little People. You know, that those were my jam back in the day. I didn't know back then how long it took to make one of these videos, so I was constantly trying to find new animations to fill the void. David M. Pickett's Nightly News at 9 took a lot of time to put out a new segment. Uh, Forest Fire was way too edgy, and my parents may not speak English, but they definitely know the swear words. There's where I found Mini Live TV. I remember the first episode I saw was uh, Season 1, Episode 8 crossing Ian. The plot of this episode was just so dumb but original to me at the same time. I had no idea what it was, but it was time for Mini Life TV. On a sunny day, I wake up, and the line trains in, and automatically I reach out, and I feel the warm weight on my fingers, yellow with the train. Mini Life TV was created by Christopher Salizes and Ian Holmquist. Uh, well, I started Mini Life TV because I was starting college and I realized that I needed a job, but I didn't really like any of the jobs out there in the real world because they all seemed to suck. So I was like, what can I do that I like to do and I can get paid for it? I'm like, well, this YouTube thing seems to be taking off with other people. Maybe I should try that. So that's what I'm doing. Premiered March 3rd of 2012 with the episode Dummy Demolition. I know I said I could watch Mini Life TV because it's not as edgy as Forest Fire 101. But watching it back for this video, I noticed all the jokes I didn't get and how this show probably isn't peachy at all. Hello, my name is Baby Crotch Rash. Oh shit. Make it good. That's what she said. I love the yellow because it's always perfect for skin color. Unless you're painting one of those freaky looking pink people from the most recent Lego sets. They look like minifigs who've been out in the sun too long. No! No, not you! It was a f***ing sea urchin. Freaking perverts. All right, let's get him. No, no, please, I'm sorry. <laughs> Say, how would you like to go back to my place and do some deeds that won't be caught by this camera crew? At least Lego pants are good at hiding erections. Hey, hey, hey. You were only doing all this stuff to try and get me in bed, you pervert? Sensor bars. For nudists and naughty people. Well, sir, I heard it was Frank Week, so I replaced Archie's oil with Explosion Carbonate. Explosion carbonate? Chip, how could you? <laughs> Help! My suicidal cat is up in that tree! I think he's really going to do it this time! What? It was a hard thing to do, but it was worth it. That's what she said. Lights! Camera! Intro music! It's time to heal your pets. It's time to burst your guts. It's time for everyone. 
Uncontrollable levels of happiness can harm others. Depressics can help. Ask your doctor if depressics is right for you. Me for your life! Mini Life TV is a show about everything. The show's presenters, Chris and Ian, do a web show where they showcase, well, everything. But in between, we get a few episodes where we follow our characters outside of the show. In season 1, 9 out of the 15 episodes are just about the show. One episode that doesn't follow the show is the episode Crossing Ian. In this episode, we follow Ian outside of the show, trying to win the mayoral race in his city. The episode where they look more into this was season 2, episode 1. But for me to explain that, we have to jump back to the finale of season 1. There we left with a Chris and Ian frozen in time. Two months later, when season 2 came out, we learned that the animator, IRL Chris, passed out. Oh, hey, come on. What? What? what happened? Uh, you uh, kind of passed out while filming, so I had to go to that couch. Now that you're up, there is one matter of business we should take care of pretty quickly. Oh yeah. Ah! We're free! We were frozen for what seemed like forever! Oh, we're the creators of the show. I'm the animator, Chris. My name is business partner, Ian. We're the real life version of you guys. But I'm back now, so we can get the show going again. So you guys say you're the ones animating us? What do you mean? Well, you know how our videos are divided in two? Like how one part of them is you guys doing your show, and then the other part is you guys at your house or somewhere else doing some adventure that isn't part of your show? Well, that's where we come in. We're making you guys make a show. Right, so it's basically a show within a show. My friend Fabio and I wanted to basically copy the idea of a show within a show. The idea was that these two characters' company breaks down, so they start making YouTube videos about everything. <laughs> We call it Nerds TV, you know, a super obvious ripoff. But then later last week, after I finished watching Mini Life TV for this video, I, I opened up Netflix and I found this Brazilian TV show that basically ripped me off. Here's the description. A group of partners of a broken importing company discovers in a camera the chance to produce videos for the internet and then clear their debts. Borges Importadora ripped me off my ripoff, guys. So yeah, Mini Life TV was a huge inspiration for me. Season 2 and 3 follow this formula of a few episodes that follow the show and Chris and Ian's life. Some personal favorites of mine from this era are A Dark Knight, that's so gay. You know, Mini Life TV supported LGBT people since before it was mainstream, guys. Mime support, some nights, poking the pilot, how I got your laptop. I, I actually have some theories. I think either Snowball or Chip is the dad. You know, cause uh, Chip, Chip he's a robot, so uh, all the pieces fit. Snowball, because of what he said, you know, during the Splitsies 5000 episode. Say, how would you like to go back to my place and do some deeds that won't be caught by this camera crew? You know, I saw a little bit of a spark there. Definitely season 3 established Chris and Ian in the show, and also set up characters for season 4 and 5. Like Snowball, Abel, Master Quoker, and uh, oh yeah, God. Well, uh, actually, gosh. You know, I was just thinking how nice it is that we've gone this far in the year without any crazy stuff happening to us. Yeah, it is nice. And I think we can safely say that nothing dangerous or malicious is brewing anywhere near us. Ah, uh, you jinxed it. Season 4 took a different direction. A pretty bold one if you ask me. As it ditched the entire show within a show. Season 4 introduces us completely to Abel and Master Quoka. Abel is Chris's friend from way back in the day. <laughs> I can't believe how long it's been since we last saw each other. How many years now? About four, I think. Too many. <laughs> and Master Quoka is, uh, well, um, uh, that. Both come to Mini Life City for the Lagando World Tournament. If Abel wins, Master Quoka will teach him how to use magic. Alright. Hello? Can y'all hear me? <clears throat> well, first off, let me thank all of you for participating in the tournament. If you take a look around, you'll notice that there are over 150 fighters in this room, all spanning many different species, some from various regions on this planet, others from different planets entirely. It warms the heart to think that so many different people can come together in such a unifying way to kick each other's butts. While on the other side of the X team who are basically Nazis just like Billy Mosh, who want to commit an act of domestic terrorism to send a message against aliens. Outworlders will finally begin to realize just how unsafe and unwelcome they are to the condo. 
but where are our main characters? Well, Snowball got a few chances to shine in the previous seasons, but in this one, the character learns about racism against his own kind, as he goes out into the wild for the first time and sees how his people are treated. Hello, ma'am. My name is Snowball, and I... Um, ill? Like, whose vampire is this? I don't know, but he definitely wasn't made right. Look at his goofy teeth. Goofy teeth? Can you, like, leave us alone? We're, like, trying to have a conversation. But Chris and Ian are just broke. Their season is just them trying to raise money to keep Mini Life TV alive. White people problems, am I right? This season also sees the return of season 1 antagonist Baby Craw Crash. So that was a nice little callback. And while season 4 took a lot of risks, it's still not my, one of my favorites. The action is just so cheesy and the X team really didn't do much as Baby Craw Crash. You know, I felt like they came out of nowhere, but I understand what they were trying to do with it. Maybe worked a little bit on Commander Rex a little bit, make him a better villain. So now it's just about them and their lives, it's hardly even a show anymore. That's why I stopped watching. On the other hand, season 5 does the same thing but in a better way, since season 4 already did all the groundwork. We see robots learning morality, Chris and Ian deal with corporate influence, which by the way, they had this planned out back since 2014, before all the apocalypses. Apocalypse I? It's kind of sad we have to think of a plural for it. But the storyline I think is the best, well obviously Snowball's. Snowball this season already knows about the hatred towards his people and he's trying to change that. But as well he has to deal with grief and depression. On November 25th, 2016, the episode The Lost Undead came out. It, it had been a while since the last time I watched Mini Life TV. It was a completely different show. But it's a great shift. Just like Snowball grows up in the show, the show grew up. The audience grew up, and Chris and Ian grew up. That's why I like Snowball. He's the audience, but he's also Buddha. <laughs> Let me explain. Both of them grew up in a palace, never left the house, and their parents didn't want them to see the harsh reality. Until one day, they got out of the house and learned the truth. So, so what's next for Mini Life TV? Right now, they're posting these shorts called Mini Life Chronicles. But the main big boy that's coming is this movie, Mini Life Origins. What does that mean? Well, what would you guys think about starting your own movie? Hmm. A movie, you say? Chris? I think we should have that meeting. Although it's surprising that Mini Life has survived the algorithm shifts, considering how long it takes them to complete a season. For example, season 1 started March 2nd, 2012, and ended June 6, 2012. Season 2, July 13, 2012, October 19, 2012. Season 3, January 4th, 2013, March 12th, 2013. Season 4 started February 6th, 2014, and ended December 12th, 2014. Season 5 started September 9th, 2015, and ended June 12th, 2017. One year, six months, and seven days. But also the episodes have gotten longer. Season 1 episodes will run for a little over 4.5 minutes, Season 2 would take almost 5.5, Season 3 almost 6 minutes. But Season 4 and 5 completely destroy the runtime of the previous seasons. Since an average episode for Season 4 would last almost 12.5 minutes, and as for Season 5 it was over 10.5 minutes. I think we've all heard how stupid long animation takes and how much harder independent animation is. It's just one guy animating this 582 minute long animation for free. I know that for this Social Blade may not be the best source, since they say one month I make from 12 to 27 dollars, and every year I make 15 to 326 dollars, but they estimate Mini Life TV makes from 1 to 20 dollars every month, and once a year they make 20 to 236 dollars. So let's hope Mini Life TV continues, and they still afford to make a movie. I saw a post on Instagram that said they already have 90% of the voiceover down. Again, I really hope Mini Life Origins comes out and finds a little bit of success, you know? It would be a huge victory for the independent creator in the middle of the corporate era of YouTube. Even though ironically in the show, Chris and Ian are able to do this thanks to an entertainment giant. I can't wait to start. That's it for today's video, let's read some comments from the last video. 
This video on its own is a bruh moment. Leave a comment so you can get featured on the next video. Also, go watch last, 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 last week's video. Here's a clip. Can we talk about this movie soundtrack? It's kind of trash. It feels like music from Lego Batman. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram and on Twitter. Check out Mini Life TV. Like this video. If this video hits 1 million likes, Mini Life Origins comes out, guys. I can't confirm. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell, guys. It doesn't sound like much, but it really, really helps out. Thank you, and I'll see you later. <laughs>